In this video, we're going to be looking at the structures of DNA and RNA, and it's definitely worth knowing what RNA and DNA stand for. And DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, whereas RNA simply stands for ribonucleic acid. And when we look at structures, don't forget to remember what we're actually talking about when we're looking at DNA and RNA. And remember, DNA is that twisted ladder, so it's a double helix. Which is found within the nucleus of the cell. Whereas when we're looking at RNA, we're looking at protein synthesis. And remember, in order to make a copy of that DNA, we need to make various types of RNA, including messenger RNA, mRNA, and transfer RNA, tRNA and they help to assemble the amino acids and help to bring a copy of the DNA to the ribosome. So just be aware of the bigger picture here. Now, as you can see from the name, they're both examples of nucleic acids and they're macromolecules, which means that they're large molecules and they're also polymers because they're made up of many small similar molecules joined together to form a large chain. So let's make a note of that now. Now, what are these smaller similar molecules that DNA and RNA are both made up of? Well, these are called nucleotides, and that's really what this video is all about. We're going to be looking at the structure of the nucleotides, which make up both DNA and RNA. So a nucleotide is made up of three things. First of all, a nitrogen-containing base. Secondly, a pentose sugar. And thirdly, a phosphate group. And that is true for all nucleotides. But we do know probably from GCSE and IGCSE a bit more information about this. So first of all, what is that nitrogen-containing base? Well, in the case of DNA, remember, you're looking at four bases, which is adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And that's the case in DNA. In RNA, you've got to remember that we have no thymine, instead it's swapped for uracil. But all the other bases remain the same. So you have adenine, guanine, cytosine. But this time we have uracil. And now let's look at that pentose sugar. Slight differences again with DNA and RNA. With DNA, the name of the sugar is deoxyribose. Whereas in RNA, you've got just a ribose sugar. And then handily, the phosphate group remains the same for both. Let's, for argument's sake, just draw one of these nucleotides. I'm going to choose to draw a DNA nucleotide containing the base adenine. So that would look something like this. You'd have your phosphate group, you'd have it joined to your pentose sugar, which has five carbons in it, hence pentose. And this would be, in the case of DNA, it would be deoxyribose. And then lastly, that's connected to the nitrogen-containing base, which, as I've already said, in this case, we're going to pick adenine. Now let's quickly look at our complementary base pairing rules. And that just means that the bases have to pair in a very specific way. And in the case of DNA, you find that the straight letters pair together. And that means A to T and you find that the curly letters pair together, which is C to G, for example. So if I were to continue this strand, let's just make up some bases along here. And then based on that, A is a straight letter, so I'm pairing that with T. T is straight, so I'm pairing it with A. C is curly, so I'm pairing it with G. And G is curly, so I'm pairing it with C. And you can quickly see how your DNA double helix would build up. You can see this ladder structure forming. And don't forget that each of these bases is connected to a deoxyribose sugar and a phosphate group in order to produce the nucleotide. So of course that bit that I've just highlighted is a nucleotide because it contains a base, which in this case is thymine, contains a sugar which is deoxyribose, and it contains a phosphate group. And I could draw that the whole way down, but I'm not going to because it will get very messy. And all I'm really trying to show you here is how they pair. 
And then how do they actually link together? Well, that's through hydrogen bonds. Some examples will need this, some won't. Try and remember that there's two hydrogen bonds for every A to T base pairing and three when it comes to C and G. So let's draw those in now. Two for A to T or T to A, and then three for C to G. So it'll look something like that. Now notice that the bases can be divided into two categories. Not all examples will need this. And they can either be purine or pyrimidine. And that the only difference here is their structures. So purine bases you tend to find are larger. They contain two rings, whereas pyrimidine contain only one. Now in terms of how they pair up, you find that for each rung on the ladder, you're going to have one base which is a purine and one which is a pyrimidine. You can't have two purines and two pyrimidines on the same rung, and that's because it would alter the width of the DNA ladder. So let's work out what the pyrimidines are. And luckily, it's the bases that contain Y. So we're looking here at cytosine and thymine. And then by definition, because uracil takes the place of thymine in RNA, a uracil is therefore a pyrimidine and therefore what does cytosine pair up with well we know this the curly letters pair up so we know guanine is therefore purine and we know that thymine pairs up with adenine as does uracil so that's why adenine is a purine so remember that guanine and adenine are both larger structures compared with cytosine thymine and uracil